Fine. Good morning to you all, students. Hi, students. How are you? I hope you all are fine. So, students, have you all studied till last week portions? Have you all studied? So, have you all studied till yesterday's portion? That means last week portion. So, have you all studied? So, welcome to our today's online class, students. So, now we are studying about which chapter? Chapter 6. What's the title of your chapter? Chapter 6. What's the title of your chapter? Specification and Abstraction. Yes, indeed. So, what's the title of your chapter? Specification and Abstraction. So, what are the things you are studying in Specification and Abstraction? Algorithms. So, before we are going to study about today's portion, just recall what are the things I have taught at the last class. Till what are the things we have studied in chapter 6. Okay. So, first we have studied algorithms. Is indeed what do you mean by algorithms? Algorithms is a collection or sequence of statements. Then, what are the things you have studied? Building blocks of algorithm. So, how many building blocks of algorithms are there? Four building blocks of algorithm. What are the four building blocks? Data, variables, functions, control flow. Isn't it? Till that we have studied in the last class. Okay. So have you all studied this uh, flow, control flow statements? Very, very important. What are the control flow statements? Sequential, iterative, looping, alternative. Isn't it? So this and all very, very important questions. Okay. <clears throat> so today we are going to study about algorithm design techniques. Okay. So, last class, just I have started about the first title. Okay. So, there are totally four algorithm design techniques are there. Okay. So, how many algorithm design techniques are there? Four. So, among the four, first one is specification. Okay. So, what's the first design technique? Specification. Okay. So, listen. What do you mean by specification means? First, you are going to define some problem in short format. That means precisely. What do you mean by precisely? Question paper you might have seen. Answer in precise. What do you mean by precise? Short. So, for example, so you are going to study one big paragraph. Okay. So, that paragraph contain nearly 200 lines. So, that is very tough for you to study. So, what you will do? Just cut short the paragraph. Important points alone you will study and write. Isn't it? That is a process. Likewise, if they have given some problem to you means first you will thorough about the problem then you need to solve the problem or state the problem in precise or in short manner. Understand? That's the first thing. So, always you need to Specification means always you need to solve the problem in very short. Second point. So, even if you want to define the problem in short manner. So, what are the things need to be included in that problem? Okay. So, first. So, for example, in a mathematical problem. So, if they have given some questions in mathematical. So, first what you will do? First, you will put the heading as a solution. Then, you will write a given. Isn't it what you mean by given? What are the values or what are the variables they have given in the problem? First, you will write that one. Isn't it? Likewise, here you need to specify. First, you need to specify given input. Okay. So, what are the inputs are there in the problem? First, you need to specify the given input. Okay. Then, what output you need to get? For example, some theorems or uh, some problem, mathematical problems. They ask to prove LH is equal to RHS. Okay. So, you know the answer. This answer only you will get. So, what are things you know? Input you know. And also, what answer you are going to get. That also you know. So, same only. Here, first you need to start the problem. Then in that problem, you need to specify. What are things you need to specify? How many inputs are there in the problem? That input you need to specify. And also, what output you are going to get. Understand that the second point. Then third step is 
you need to specify properties of the input. Okay. So, how many inputs are there? No problem. So, all the inputs you need to state the properties. Okay. What do you mean by properties? So, properties means in science and all you will study, uh, already you might have studied, say the properties of uh, uh, what water. So, for example, they uh, ask the question, state the properties of water. What are the things you will say? Water is a colorless. Isn't it? Then uh, the formula of water is like this. Isn't it? So, likewise, if you gave something to define the property means, you will say all the properties of a particular things. Isn't it? Likewise, in this problem, third step, you need to specify the properties of the input. Listen, because they will ask the problem in specification means you need to state all the things. So, listen carefully. So, only I am taking slow with each point. Okay. So, you need to spe specify the properties of the input. Understand. Next, you need to specify relation between the input and output. Understand what the thing you need to specify? Relation between input and output. Okay. So, for example, if the mathematical problem LH is equal to RH means. So, what's the relation between input and output? Using the input variables, you are solving the problem or you are taking, giving the output as LH is equal to RH. Same thing only. Understand? So, three points you have studied in specification. What are the things? First, you need to study the problem thorough. I need to short the problem in precise manner. Second thing, you need to specify how many inputs. You need to specify the number of inputs as well as what output you are going to get. Okay. Third point, you need to specify the properties of the input as well as the relation between input and output. Okay. Please, while I am teaching itself, please study these points. Then only you will never get forget. Understand? So, next thing is abstraction. Understand? Abstraction. Okay. So, here, so what do you mean by abstraction means? So, here you are going to visible or view only essential things you are going to visible to the users. Okay. For example, you will take any one problem. Mathematical problem means mathematical problems. Okay. So, in mathematical problem, they asked one 5 mark question. So, in that problem, you have lot of rough work. For example, in that problem, you need to add numbers and you need to multiply the numbers. You need to divide the numbers. Whether all the things you will uh, write in this answer. So, in that problem, so for adding, subtraction, multiplication, then division. This all the things you will do as a rough work at the side of the paper. Isn't it? But if we do that things only, you can able to get the answer. Isn't it? Understand that one what I am going to tell. So, in my, for a mathematical problem... So, for a mathematical problem, there are a lot of things on that you are uh, need to do. To get the answer, a lot of things you need to do. So, that addition, subtraction, division, these things and all you will do as a rough work. Is it? By doing all the things only, you will get the correct answer for that problem. Is it? Likewise, here, abstraction means, if you are giving some problem, means the problem will get lot of details. Okay, like a mathematical problem. So, the mathematical problem contains lot of details. But, you are not going to write all the details in the main sheet of your answer paper. Isn't it? So, you will write only the main things or important things. So, for example, you are writing some formula. So, you need to calculate that formula. That and all you will do. Calculations and all you will do in a rough work. The calculations you won't include in the main sheet of the paper. Isn't it? Likewise, abstraction also, if you take one problem means, the problem will contain lot of details. Okay? So, all the details are not necessary for solving the problem. Okay? Likewise, the mathematical problem, whether all rough work need to solve the problem, but whether all the things need to write in the main sheet, no. That is all unnecessary things to write in the main paper. Okay, likewise in this problem also lot of details are there but unnecessary all these details are not necessary for solving the problem. Only few things need to essential. Okay, so how they will evaluate your paper, max paper and all first they will check whether you are writing given 
then formula is there then uh, calculation is there then answer is there this four steps only they will check inside what are things you are calculating and all they won't check it isn't it so only given inputs then formulas then calculations then answer that and all essential likewise in this problem some details are only essential okay so abstraction means only it will display the essential details and hiding the remaining things that is known as abstraction understand uh, because uh, think about the mathematical problem similarly how you are writing the important calculations in the main paper you are not writing the rough work in main answer sheet isn't it likewise abstraction means it will display only the essential things essential properties and hiding the unnecessary details understand that is called what abstraction understand what do you mean by abstraction now it's a study important two more question what do you mean by abstraction so ignoring or hiding unnecessary details unnecessary details it won't display it will hide unnecessary details and only display the essential properties that is known as abstraction okay so so last class we have studied about one example traffic signal isn't it where we have studied to represent state isn't it in traffic signal how many states will be there three green color or either red color or amber color isn't it that we are calling as a state so in program how you will represent that states using variables isn't it so so only that variables essential things you are displaying in that program and in essential details you are not going to represent understand what are the things you have studied in abstraction so if you are taking a problem means the problem will contain lot of details only you are going to display the essential things unnecessary things you are not going to display so that hiding unnecessary things and displaying essential properties that is known as abstraction so in a problem you are displaying the state in the form of variables using variables also you are going to display only essential things and ignoring the unessential things understand yes then third thing is composition okay so composition means already you have studied about control flow statements is any so how many control flow statements you have studied sequential alternative and iterative is any so what's the use of that one control flow means the order in which the program needs to execute is any so so algorithm is composed of assignment what do you mean by assignment for example in the problem you are giving uh, one uh, value a equal to 5 What's the meaning of that one? You are assigning the value five to the variable a, b equal to ten. So what's the meaning? You are assigning the value ten to the variable b. That is called assignment. There, okay. So this composition is composed of what are the things? Assignment as well as control flow statements. Okay. So what's the meaning of control flow? Control flow means in which order the particular lines or statements of the program need to be. executed so what are the order you have studied either it need to be executed line by line that means first line second line next line that is called which statement sequential next second statement is alternative so it will check the condition whether the condition is true means the true statement it will give the output false means false statement likewise so here composition means composition is based on test a condition of the state okay what do you mean by testing condition sorry remembering about the traffic signal program so traffic signal i gave no traffic signal either it will be red red means red will be uh, red condition is where uh, red light blink means that condition alone true so what are the things you are given inside red that you will get the output other things will be a false so likewise composition always test a condition based on the condition only it will give the output or it will execute the statements okay so based on the condition it will execute which statements need to be executed whether the first line or order by need to execute or whether true condition need to execute or false condition need to execute okay so what are the things you have studied in composition so composition consists of two things what are they 
assignment as well as control flow statements so it will always execute based on a condition so it will check the state based on either the condition is true or false based on that condition it will decide whether the statements need to be executed in order wise or in true or false condition understand yes next thing is decomposition okay so decomposition also already you have studied about function same thing only okay so what do you mean by functions are you remember what do you mean by functions what do you mean by sub algorithm what's other name of function sub algorithm so for that only one best example i said if you are going to study the 200 lines of a program and uh, paragraph you are feeling very tough to study that 200 lines so first you will split that paragraph into 10 10 lines so first part first paragraph will contain 10 lines then second paragraph will contain 10 lines so all together you will write all the 200 lines means only you will get the correct paragraph answer so each 10 10 lines we are telling you no, that is called function understand so you are dividing the main program into that i'm dividing the main algorithm into simple simple parts we are calling as a functions okay so each function is independent of each other what's the meaning of that one means for example in a paragraph you are splitting 20 or 10 10 lines you are splitting so first paragraph is different from second paragraph second paragraph is different from third paragraph isn't it so that is called independent not dependent likewise here also you are going to constructing function so each function is independent one function is independent to other function okay so if you are in that paragraph so if you combine all the paragraph or 200 lines you are splitting into 10 10 line one paragraph second paragraph that like so all the paragraphs if you combine only you will get the correct answer for one paragraph likewise in that you are splitting into your functions if you will combine all the functions only you will get the main algorithm okay so so how we are not bothering about how the function we are going to implement okay so we are not bothering about how we are going to implement the function but you know what's the use or specification of the function okay so you are studying paragraph you are not going to think about where that paragraph you are going to write or whether this question will come on that until you are not going to think but you are studying likewise you are not going to think whether this function is implemented or not you will think only the use of the function understand so what do you mean by decomposition what are the things you have studied so you are divide the main algorithm into similar simple simple parts each one we are calling as an functions so each function is independent of each other so if you get the correct uh, answer means or if you get the correct algorithm means you will combine all the function then only you will get the main algorithm so you are not going to bother about where the functions you are using only you will think about the specification or the use of the function understand so algorithm design techniques four algorithm design techniques you have studied what are the things first thing is a uh, specification second one is abstraction fourth one is composition fifth one is uh, sorry third one is composition fourth one is decomposition so this and all very very important questions sometimes they will ask for two marks sometimes they will ask for three marks sometimes they will ask for five marks also so please study this question very very important okay so next we are going to study detailed about specification okay so just you have studied introduction and what's the meaning of specification is it now you are going to study in detail about specification okay so what are what are the points you have studied in specification first point is you are going to solve the problem in short manner is it so in specification what are things already you have studied first it we are going to solve the problem in short manner that's the first point ready to solve a problem first you need to state the problem play first you need to state the problem what's the problem first you need to state the problem and you need to short the problem that is precisely okay so what's the second point you have studied so you need to specify what are the details you need to specify in the problem 
given input and also the output. Then what's the third point? The central very very important. So I am again and again I am repeating. Third point is you should know the properties of the given input. Then relation between input and output. Okay. So once again specification very very important question. So like this only you are going to solve the problem. So I am telling. So what are the things you have studied in this? What are the things you have studied once more you repeat? First thing is you need to state the problem clear. What problem they are giving? No problem. That problem you need to state the problem clear and in short manner. First point. Already you have studied. Second point. So you need to write the given input as well as what output you are going to get. The next point. What's the next point? You need to specify the properties of the input as well as the properties of the output. Next. Now what's the next point you need to specify relation between input and desired output. Four points you have studied. So in problem also you are going to write these four things. Okay. So only I am telling again and again. Please on time read it. Okay. For what's the first point once again you tell. First you need to write the problem in short. First point over. Next you need to write the input as well as output. Second point. Next you need to write the properties of the input as well as output. Next point. You need to specify relation between input and output. Understand? So, so that only they have given in diagram. So, listen. First, what they are giving? Input. So, what are the things you need to specify? Already you studied? Input. Then, what are the things you need to know? Output. Input and output, you need to know. Then, what's the next point you have studied? You need to specify the properties of this input as well as properties of output. Then, Third point you have studied input and output relation. Isn't it? So if this input and output relation is correct means only you will get the desired output. Okay. So how you are giving this relation between inputs and outputs. Okay. So input and output relation you are giving through variables. Okay. So in problem. So you are giving A equal to 5 b equal to 10 okay so you need to add the for example you are going to add two numbers okay so what are the inputs last class i i taught about this one so you are going to add two numbers what are the inputs you will give for example a two inputs a equal to 5 b equal to 10 so in this algorithm you are going to compute c equal to a plus b understand inputs what are the things you are giving a equal to 5 and b equal to 10 so here you are going to compute c equal to a plus b so what are the outputs you will get c equal to a plus b means 10 <coughs> 10 plus 5 15 okay so what's the relation between input and output this variable so what the variable c equal to a plus b understand that we are calling as an algorithm so that only they are giving c so the input and outputs are now read and study then only you will get to understand okay c the uh, first itself i am reading so algorithm is specified by properties of given input. What are things you need to specify? Properties of the input you need to specify as well as relation between input and output. Okay. So in other words we are saying the specification of our normally specification means, so means you will get the relation between input and output. Okay. You need to get the desired input and output relation. Okay, so how you are passing this input and output relations. Okay, so for that only one example I said A equal to B and you, if you're feeling tough to study means please write near to this. Okay, in your textbooks please write it. Okay, so how you are passing that uh, input and output? Input and outputs are passed to an algorithm using variables. What are the variables? I, I said an example, no, A equal to 5, B equal to 10. So, through two variables you are passing a equal to 5 and b equal to 10. Then, you are computing the algorithm c equal to a plus b. Then, what output you are getting? c equal to 15. Understand? So, listen. Now, the value of the variables starts is known as initial state. In that example, a equal to 5 and b equal to 10. Okay? So, the value of the variables. What is the value of the variable there? a equal to 5. A value of A is 5. Value of B is 10. So that value we are calling as an what? Initial state. 
before the algorithm we are going to start what value you are giving to that variable that we are calling as and which state initial state understand then the values of the variable when the algorithm finishes after the algorithm for example first you have given the variable a equal to 5 and b equal to 10 so in algorithm what you are calculating c equal to a plus b so what the answer you will get 15 so that c equal to 15 that variable you are calling us and which one final state now read it value of the variable when algorithm finishes after adding that number that algorithm finishes you are getting that answer no c equal to 15 that value we are calling as an final state first you are passing input a equal to 5 b equal to 10 that we are calling as an initial state understand now what do you mean by initial state and final state this is all important questions okay understand input and output relation so specification means you should define input and output relation decide input and output relation you need to get so, how you are passing that input and output relation means using variables. Okay. So, please write that example near this diagram in your book. Okay. See, in this place of inputs, you write a equal to 5, b equal to 10. So, in the algorithm, you write c equal to a plus b. So, what's our c equal to a plus b means c equal to 5 plus 10. What output you will get? c equal to 15. Okay. So, the value we are passing at the first, a equal to 5 and b equal to 10, that value we are calling as and which state? Initial state. So, after computing the algorithm, the algorithm finishes, you are getting the value c equal to 15. That value we are calling as and which state? Final state. Understand now? So, listen. Here, this is this and all just a theorem like. Okay. First itself, before starting this chapter itself, I said this the, uh, chapter is full raw theory. And also theorem based. So please listen carefully. If you study the theory means only you can able to write these theorems. Okay, listen. So here, <coughs> so already we have studied. You now what are the things you need to specify in specification? Properties of the input as well as properties of the output and input-output relation. Isn't it? So the property of the input you are specifying in which letter, which variable P. Understand? So, the property, in property of the input, you are specifying in which variable? P. This is a property of input. Next, you are giving the property of the output you are giving in the variable Q. Understand? So, what is the use of P? Property of the, now itself you study, please. Now itself you study. P means the property of the input. Q means the property of the Decide output. That means what output you are getting. Two variables P and Q. So what is the input property P? What's the output property Q? Then you, the name, the algorithm you are giving in the name yes. What's the algorithm you are giving? Yes. So three variables they are using. What are they? P, Q and yes. What do you mean by P? P means input property. Q means output property. Yes means algorithm. Okay. So, this is the way you need to write the given algorithm. Okay. So, first you need to write the algorithm name. That means name of the algorithm. Okay. So, for specification, first what do you need to write? You need to specification problem means you need to write first name of the algorithm. That is algorithm name. Then you need to specify inputs. How many inputs you are giving? Understand? For example, you are adding two numbers means how many inputs you will give? Two numbers means two inputs. For example, A comma B. For example, adding two numbers. I am giving the name of the algorithm is add. For example, I am telling, okay. So, for adding two numbers, you are giving the name of the algorithm is add. So, inputs, two inputs I am giving. A comma B. Understand? For a example only, I am telling. So, likewise, so if you they, if they ask for the specification problem means first you need to specify name of the algorithm. Then in bracket you should specify inputs. Understand? <clears throat> Next thing, what's the second point you have studied? First point over. Second point, need to specify the property of the input. Already you have studied or not? Second point, property of the input. So, what's the property of the input? So, that we are giving the input property in the variable P. 
So only first itself I say, read it, P be the required property of input. Okay, so input property they have given in P. So only they have given these two lines with the inputs P. Then, one, then what's the next point you should study? Already you studied that point is you need to specify the property of the output. So what's the property of output Q? Understand? So what's the three steps you need to write? First you need to write the name of the algorithm. Then inside the bracket you should mention the inputs. The input property, then property of the input you are giving in the variable P, then property of the output you are giving in the variable Q. Understand? Then, so specification algorithm means, so here it will always starts with the property input and with this inputs you are solving the problem and you will satisfy this output or you need to get the proper output. Okay, so algorithm always starts with the given input P and with that input you will get the proper output satisfying the property of Q. Likewise LHS and RHS. Okay, uh, one example they will give in that you, uh, in the if you study that example means you will get understand about this one. Okay, so next slide I will explain that one. So in this algorithm they have given this two dash lines. So visible for you two dash lines so that we are calling as an comments so what's the dash line we are calling as an comments understand so what's the use of that comments means so this is the two more question what do you mean by common okay so in a program so if you see means they will give lot of comments okay so common means What's the use of that common means? Only for your understanding purpose they have given. But while you are executing the program, the computer won't execute the common line. So only the common line you should give some dash or some symbols. Okay. So each and every programming language, some symbols they will give for common lines. Okay. So what do you mean by comments? Okay. So common means... So that lines is not taken by our <coughs> pro execution of the program. Okay. So in a programming language, some lines they will use as a comments. Okay. Command lines always starts with some symbols. Okay. The symbols will be different from each and every program. Okay. That's for your understanding. For example, so if you are studying some programs or a poem, for example, English poems you are studying means. So English poem you are studying. Okay. So some lines you will uh, sometimes you will get further. So in the side of the line what you will write? The meaning for that line. Okay. Based on your understanding you will write something near to the line. Whether you will write that line for the, your exam? No. Okay. So similarly. So in programs or algorithms they will give some hint points or hints like some lines they will give a above program. Okay. So that lines we are calling as an which one? Comments. Okay. So now understand what you mean by comments. Now read the definition for comments. So comments are the statements mainly used to what annotate program for the human readers. That means for your reading, reading of the programmer. Only the programmer can able to read for the understanding of for the programmer. They are giving these command lines. That lines will not be executed by the computer. Okay. The computer won't take the command lines for execution. How the computer will identify the command lines? Because you are giving some symbols at the starting of that line. Okay, if that particular symbol will be there means that line will take us a common line a computer. Understand? Okay, so next point. So comments are crucial points. Crucial point means important points. Okay, so that are the important like hints. Okay, if you are studying some poem in English. So you will write, then for your understanding, you will write some hints, isn't it? Likewise, the comments means also is some hint points. That is crucial points, mainly useful to understand the algorithm. What's the meaning of that one? Why you are giving that hint points? To understand the algorithm. Okay. So what are the symbols or what are the signs you are using for denoting the command lines? Okay. So listen. If we this line like this double dashes line is there mainly used in algorithm to represent command line. Okay. So which is symbol is used to, to represent the comments in uh, algorithm double dashes. This and all important one more questions. Okay. So which is symbol is used to represent the command line in algorithm 
double dash this symbol okay that means two dash in c plus plus program common lines they are giving in double dash this this is a symbol used in c plus plus okay likewise in python some other symbol in other program some other symbol each and every program the symbols will be different okay here they are giving two symbols what are the symbols in algorithm which symbol is used for your command line double dash but in c plus plus which is symbol this backslash two double dash slash symbol is used for comments understand so what do you mean by comments comments are the statements mainly used to give for your understanding for the human readers that line is not by a not executed by the computer okay so that are the important points to understand the algorithm okay so to in algorithm which symbol is used to represent the command line double dash symbol in c++ which is symbol this double slash symbol understand so this is the example for the specification program okay so if you study the theory thorough means only you can able to write this example listen carefully so here in this example you are going to divide two values and divide the values and you are going to write the quotient and remainder okay what's your algorithm algorithm you are going to divide a number and you are going to write quotient and remainder okay so listen what's a how what's the format for writing specification of a problem first you need to specify what are things you have studied first you need to specify algorithm name then given inputs isn't it so what's algorithm name here divide of understand what's algorithm name divide so how many input variables they are given two what are they 22 comma 5 so two input variables what's algorithm name divide they have given two input variables 22 comma 5 now divide it 22 divided by 5 so what's the you will get four as a quotient and two as a remainder okay so next example they are giving divide 15 comma 3 so what you will get so you will get the so the quotient as a 5 and remainder as a 0 okay so here now what's the first step you have studied in specification you need to give the algorithm name and input variable so how many input variables are there two what are they a and b okay so here they are giving how many input variables two what are they a and b what's the value of a now 22 and what's the value of b now 5 okay then next so you are storing the quotient in the variable q understand you are storing the quotient in the variable q and remainder in the variable r okay so what are the output variables q and r understand now so in this algorithm you are giving two inputs what's the name of the algorithm divide so in this algorithm you are giving two inputs what are they 22 and 5 so in this 22 you are dividing you are getting quotient as a 4 and remainder as a 2 next also same so here two input variables the input variables you are giving as an a and b that mean first example a value is 22 and b value is 5 so next what are the <clears throat> the quotient you are getting no so quotient you are denoting in the variable q and remainder you are denoting in the variable r okay so what's the output variable now input variable a and b output variable q and r understand so what are the input variables input variables a and b and the output variable q and r understand so first step over <coughs> what's the first specification so specification algorithm means first step is you need to name the algorithm and you need to second point is identify the input and output variables understand like this they will ask their own problems you need to write so only again and again i am telling So algorithm name you need to write this format. You should write then identify the input and output variables. What are the input variables A and B and output variables quotient and remainder quotient as a Q and remainder as a R. So first part over. Then what's the second part? Then you need to identify properties of input and output. Isn't it? So what are the properties of input? So first property is the first proper input. How many input variables are there? A and B. so a should be an integer what's the meaning of integer number the value needs to be an number then only you can able to 
divide it, isn't it? Whether you can give any letters, A, comma, B. Whether you can divide two letters, no, you can divide only numbers. So, the variable A should be a number. Understand? Then, remainder is meaningful only for integer division. So, B should not be zero. Why means? So, anything divided by zero means that division is not allowed, not accessible. So, the B also need to be a number. So, only they are given. Second step, the B should not be zero. So, if the, CB, the value of B is zero means you can't be able to divide the particular value. Understand? These are the properties of inputs. What are the properties of inputs? A should be an, A and B should be an integer. The value of B should not be a zero because anything you can't be able to divide it with zero. Understand? Next. So, properties of input you are going to write. Listen. So, inputs, the same thing you are writing in an algorithm. What are the thing? A is an integer and B not equal to zero. Understand? Understand the input property? So, input property you are writing. A is an integer and B not equal to zero. That means the value of A need to be a number and the value of B need not to be zero. Okay. Then, second part or what's the third part you have studied? Relation between input and output. Yes, indeed. For that, so what are the input variables A and B and what are the output variables Q and R? So, what do you mean by Q? Quotient and R means remainder. So, the input and output relation means, so this is the property, this you should study. Okay, listen, study A equal to Q into B plus R. You need to study A equal to Q into B plus R. Listen, what's the value of A? 22, isn't it? So, Substitute here. The quotient you will get us. Listen. So, last example. What's the value of A? 22. Quotient value is 4. Remainder value is 2. Substitute here. Substitute. Value of quotient is 4. 4 into. What's the value of B now? 1 minute. So, what's the value of in the last slide? What's the value of B? 5. Remainder is so, remainder is what the quotient? Quotient is 4 and remainder is 2. Quotient 4 and the remainder 2. So, substitute here. Quotient value 4 and remainder 2. So, 4 into 5. What's the value of 5? B, 5. 4 into 5, 20. 20 plus remainder 2, 22. Whether you are getting the value of A? Substitute here. Quotient value 4 into what's the value of B? 5. 4 into 5, 20. Plus what's the value of remainder 2? You are getting 22. What's the value of A now? 22. So, now you are getting the value. So, this is the property. Understand? So, this one you should, you need to study. Then, second property you are giving, remainder need not to be a 0. For that, they are giving 0 less than or equal to remainder B. That means, the remainder as well as B need not the value of 0. Understand? So, for getting the output, you need to combine the input and output relation. So, what are the input and output relation? So, A equal to Q. This is the input relation. And what's the output relation? This one. You are combining both this. So, somewhat tough only. Please understand and study. So, first you need to write the input property. A is an integer. B equal to 0. Next, relationship between input and output. You need to study this formula. Substitute the value. You will get the value of A, then the remainder and B, the value should not be 0. You need to combine input and output. So, both you need to combine the A and this one. For output, you are needing to get means this one and this one you are combining and writing. Understand? Listen. So, they are giving, why the, you are using the, in before this input you are giving comments, isn't it? This symbol we are calling as an comments. So, they, that only they are giving. So, inputs also you are giving comments and output symbol also you are giving in a comment. So, now write this specification algorithm. Divide of A comma B input. Already you have studied no. A is an integer and B not equal to 0 output. Already you have studied no. So, that relation. A equal to Q into B plus R and 0 and R. Understand? So, up to this. Today enough. So, what are things you have studied? So, this is the specification problem. Okay. Like this they will have some problem. You should define like this. You need to write the algorithm name and input. Then you should write the property of an input as well as property of an output. So, this is the property of an input. So, output, input and output relation. Understand somewhat tough only. Please, after completion of this session, study this uh, algorithm design techniques. Very, 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 very important as well as specification. 
study the okay remaining things we can continue in the next class thank you thank you students